Hi there, it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand, and I wanted to show you how to make this adorable double slider card using our Snail Bit bundle from Stampin' Up! So there's the card front there, and if you pull on the little presents here, the snails come into view. And then it says, wishing you the happiest of birthdays. And when you pull it out, you put the words, you're the best on the little tab there. And you can open it up. And there's a beautiful image of the mushrooms showing on the inside. So I'm going to show you how to do um, this card. Uh, very similar. This one here I used, um, I fussy cut out the images from the designer series paper, the snail bit designer series paper. And here is the paper there. Let me see if I can show you some of the images. Lots of beautiful images here. So we've got a variety of different snails and then nice solid um, colors on the back. And then I cut out some mushrooms from this part. And then the back has beautiful hearts. And then I had cut out some of the snails from this section. Now, some of the dies that come with this set do cut out some of these images, like the, um, the snail here and the envelope there. You can cut those out. Uh, but I chose to do fussy cutting for my first card. But the card I'm going to show you today, I've chosen to stamp the images and use the dies to cut them out. So I'm going to use these three images here um, to do this card. And I will show you that in just a moment. So for this card, whatever country you're in here in New Zealand, we use um, A4 size paper. And so this is half of an A4 piece and I scored it down the center, which makes a A6 size card. So whatever um, country you're in, basically it's um, just a normal size card, but you want it to go um, landscape uh, view. So, or long ways is some, how some people say it. You don't want it to be um, opening this way. Okay, so I'm changing it up slightly for this um, demonstration. And I'm going to use Garden Green for the background card. So I've already cut half A4. That makes it A5. Scored in half gives you an A6 size card. And then for the um, image of the grass or the garden on the front, I'm going with Garden Green and Old Olive. So those two pieces you want to be the full size of the front of your card. So that's actually an A6 size. So whatever size card you use, just a couple pieces of contrasting color so the grass shows up in the size for the front of your card. Then you'll need the white cardstock, which is basic white now. I'm using Whisper White because that's what I still have in stock, but now it's basic white. So one piece for the front Again, the same size as the front of your card. So in this case, it's A6 size. So as you can see, it's the same size as those two green pieces. And then one for the inside of your card, which is actually slightly smaller. So you will have some of the green showing around the edge. So in this case, I cut this at, um, I believe, 14.3 centimeters by uh, 10 centimeters for the inside. So that's for the inside. Then you also want to have some white card stock, um, just some scrap card stock, uh, whatever size you have to do the stamped images or you want to cut out the images of the designer series paper. So uh, either that or stamp the images on some white card stock. And I've already stamped the images and I've used the dies to cut them out. So here we have, I've colored them with the Stampin' Blends. Now all the products I use to do the card, I will have listed in the description of the video. 
So if you want to buy any of the products, you can simply go down there, product codes are there, and contact your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you're in New Zealand and don't already have a demonstrator, I'd love to be yours, and so you can contact me. Um, that's my website there, michellecritchley.stampinup.net. I will also be doing um, a blog details of this project as well on my blog, papercraftaddiction.blogspot.co.nz. So those are the three images I have already stamped and die cut and colored them with the Stampin' Blends. And the dies cut them out perfectly. And these dies will match up some of the things in the designer series paper. Now this nail here, the stamp actually stamps where it says you've got mail. However, the die cuts the snail out without that message, which is perfect for my project here. So um, that's what I've got there. And the other dies that you get in the set cut out mushrooms. So there's these two little mushrooms that I believe are identical and this one bigger mushroom. So you can die cut those out of colored cardstock if you'd like um, to give you some more mushrooms to put onto your card, which I've already done. And I have mixed them up. So when you cut them out, you get the little... Uh, pieces come out of the center so there's holes in the center. Well what I did is I mi mixed them up and I um, stuck the holes into different ones. So I cut white cardstock and then put the red dots from the red cardstock that I cut. And some of them I've simply um, drawn around the die. So I drew around the die on the white cardstock and then just stuck the white cardstock um, behind the red give the white and red image here and so these here I've cut a yellow one and I've cut um, and I've used the center bits oh, there we go that were left over that popped out onto other ones to give me different colors and this one I've actually done Calypso coral cardstock in the background so again I traced the die and then use that as a solid background to glue the pieces on the front just to give it some different coloration and make it look more like um, the mushrooms that are there and the same with these guys here so I've just mixed and matched different ones that I cut out and it can be a bit fiddly so if you don't want it to be fiddly then do something like I did here and I just cut a piece of green I think that's Bermuda Bay and just glued it on the back of this um, Daffodil Delight piece of cardstock. So that's one way to get the different colored um, images there. You could also um, do a white background and then color in the circles with your blends if you want to have different colored circles. Um, you could use this as a template if you want to do it over there. But uh, I suggest you trace around the outline here and then cut within the lines to give you the nice solid background to put on the back. See that was a piece of scrap card I used. So save your scraps, use them when you can. All right, so those are all the pieces I'm going to use to decorate it with. And the first thing I want to do is get my grass cut out so I can figure out um, how to set that up. Now I'm using um, the friendly silhouette dies so on my original one you can see that i use this die here to give me all these interesting looking flowers but i just left it in green this time i'm going to try using this one which looks is like a water area but it looks more like grass so i'm going to use this one um, this time to change it up and i'll be doing that on the garden green and when I die cut it, so this, this, these dies here don't cut the bottom, they just cut the images up there. So depending on where you set it on your paper, you can have more depth below. So I'm going to start by having it down low, and then when I'm done with that, I'll be able to flip it over and cut the other side so I can get two pieces out of this one piece of cardstock. The other color I'm going to cut, my old olive, I'm going to use the curvy dies. 
Now the curvy dies are new in our mini, but they did come out early at Christmas. You could use them there. And they also go with quite curvy stamp set, which is where I'm getting my words wishing you the happiest of birthdays. So I'm using this one here to give me the curved edge. This also cuts little uh, circles, little dots in your paper, but on my card, you don't see the dots because they're hidden below. I only use the part with the curve. If you don't have the curvy dies, just freehand it. Just, you know, draw a line or use your scissors to cut um, a freehand image. And I did on my original one, I uh, cut out some of these leaves. Now this here will um, cut out little leaf shapes. And I don't know if you notice on my card here, but there's some of the leaf shapes. So I did that in the old olive and this was pear pizzazz. And then I use the little leaf shapes and I just dotted them around just to give it a bit of interest. So I'm going to cut those out and I will show you uh, what I come up with in a moment. So now I have um, die cut um, the grass. So basically I did one side and then the other side, flipped it over and die cut it from the same piece. Now, I've gone and embossed, if you can see that, um, I've embossed it with a subtle embossing folder just to show that it gives a bit more effect um, than having it plain. So you can see that's the plain and that just gives it more kind of a grassy effect. So I will emboss this one as well. And then I went and using the curvy die, um, one side does a straight line and the other gives you dots. I've cut the green piece out. So I've um, cut the one side out and then it gives me the nice smooth edge here. But that doesn't matter because when you put it together, uh, quite often you cover up the little dots as you put the sections together and overlap them. You don't see those little dots or you can just simply take your scissors and cut the dots off if you want to have a nice smooth curve. So again, that was just with that same piece. So like if I overlay them like this, you get the kind of look of the hills and I could um, flip this one around if I want it to have a solid look, but I'll probably just cut straight across there, which I'll show you right now what I mean. So to keep the curve, just cut along where your dots are. And that way, because when you use this die, you get one smooth edge and one with the decorative dots, or you could just use your scissors and uh, eyeball and cut out whichever kind of curves you want to go with um, the grass. And because the grass here is higher in the center versus the original one I did that had the height on the edges, I um, cut did the curvy die to cut um, one part of this and then I cut it up to one section and then I cut the other part to give it that kind of a hill look. So now that I've got the different layers here, you can see how they can layer over each other to give the effect of hillside and then I just need to fit in my grass to lay over that just to give it a bit more effect. So I'm going to run all these pieces through the subtle embossing folder so they'll all have this kind of interesting look and then I'll come back and show you the mechanism and put the card together. Okay so I've subtle embossed um, all those pieces there and um, I might have to cut some more background pieces. I'll have to see how this comes together but I'll set those aside for now. Um, and so the mechanism that you use for the card is a piece of thick cardstock. So this is thick whisper white. So you use thick basic um, white, or you could use thick berry vanilla if you have that, um, or any other piece of cardstock that's rather thick because um, you won't be seeing this piece. So this piece is for the inside, and this makes magic happen basically. So this piece here, um, I cut it to um, 10, 10 centimeters by five centimeters. Um, it 
doesn't really matter um, what size as long as it's uh, small enough to fit on the face of your card. So if you were doing a card, say, this way and you wanted to do it, you would just need it to be um, shorter, maybe taller, in fact. And then you also need um, a plastic bag. So any type of plastic bag will probably work. Um, I just uh, the thickness, I don't think really matters. Basically anything that is plastic. And what you do is you cut, I was going to show you the plastic bag, I can't find it. So you just cut a strip off of any type of plastic bag. So this is just a regular um, store bag, plastic bag. You could probably get away with cutting some plastic off of um, one of these bags here. Oh, and I forgot to mention you also need foam adhesive strips to um, put it together in the end. So this little rectangle here, um, as I said, I cut this 10 by 5, and then you want to cut little slits in there. Now I've already drawn them on the sides, so I did um, 1 centimeter by 4 centimeter um, if you want to have exact measurements. And basically, this is where uh, it happens. So you basically want to cut those sections apart. Again, it doesn't have to be precise measurements for the inside. Um, you're not going to see it, so just whatever works for you. Don't throw these little bits away because you may be using them later. I will show you how they can be convenient. So just a couple slits there and up the center. Okay, and don't throw that away. And then another strip um, of thick um, cardstock. Uh, this, I believe, is one centimeter by about 10. So I basically um, cut a piece off there. The length of that um, depends on how big your piece is and how far away it is from the edge, as well as how big the sentiment you want to put on there, if you do want to stamp a sentiment on the piece that pulls out. So your plastic needs to be no wider than the area that you cut. So that's four centimeters there. So your plastic piece needs to be um, that size or slightly smaller if you need. And then what you do, it's easier to go from that side for me. You just wrap it around, get a bit of your double-sided tape. Oops, sorry. I'm thinking I might need to cut my plastic slightly smaller because I think it might catch. So you do want the plastic to be small enough to fit in there. So I'm just going to cut that. Where's my double-sided tape? I was all prepared and now I can't find things. There it is, under my stance. So you want your piece to come and overlap. It doesn't have to overlap a lot, so I'm just going to overlap a little bit. But you also want it to move smoothly, so you don't want it to be um, wider than your space there. And I'm thinking my space could be a bit smaller. So instead of cutting the plastic, I'm just going to cut a little edge off there. Sorry about the noise in the background, if you can hear that. I've got a kitten, a new kitten, so he's having fun running around in the background making noise. So I'm just going to snip a bit off those edges just to make sure it's going to run smoothly. And now... go and put a little double-sided tape on one edge and that will be the start of our mechanism so we'll take the tear and tape and peel that off Want it to be not super tight, but 
not really loose. <coughs> so you need it so it'll slide back and forth. Okay? And so once it's stuck down, just cut off your excess. So that's the mechanism. Create it. Okay, and you want to clip that so your tape side is one way. So it slides back and forth. So to make it slide, that's where you've got your larger piece here. We're going to stick that down just to that end there. So again, a little bit of double sided tape could use a glue dot if you want. Uh, liquid glue does not work very well um, when you're sticking to plastic parts, so a bit of like yarn tape there, and you just want to stick that down just on one end. And so now you're going to see whoop, pull and plug. Got it too tight there. There we go. There we go. Now it's moving. And slide. Okay, so that's your mechanism there. And what you want to do with a little scrap bit. I don't think my mechanism is very wide. Um, this little scrap bit here, you're going to use. To hold it in place when uh, you fold it, when you um, pull it out the edge, so you just want to fold it over gently. That's just going to hold it in place, so it doesn't wobble as you pull it in and out. So that's basically going to make a little sleeve. So you just want to glue down that little section there. Just a bit of tear and tape there should do it. That over there we go so this um, hole should probably be a bit longer but we'll see if I can make it work with that okay so you want it to go back to the start okay. now you're also going to use your little bits. Um, you got one to stick there and one to stick on the other side. So if you have a little extra um, cardstock, and the height of that will determine the height of um, the thing that you're sliding through. So again, we'll just do a little tear and tape on the bottom to stick one down there. one on the other side. Now when you stick these down you got to make sure you don't interfere with um, the plastic and then you want one stuck on the back side. Now you have to have them opposite sides otherwise it won't um, it won't be pulling different ways. So got one there and we're gonna put one there. Now I'm not sure of how high I want that one to be so I'm just gonna cut this piece of cardstock. It's quite tall. I can shrink it down later on. So turn it over. A little bit of tear and tape on there. So we're just going to stick that down. making sure you've got one on that side and the other one is going to go the opposite side on the plastic only. So the opposite side on the plastic. So better to have it too tall than too short because we can always cut that down. So that essentially is your sliding mechanism. I don't know why I'm having trouble sliding it back. There we go. Okay. Now, one thing I think I changed up from the video I originally saw 
is to fold these edges over slightly. So about halfway. So I made them longer than original originally. And I'm going to slide them over about halfway. Okay. So see how that's folded there? And I'm going to do the same on the other side. If you want it to score at first, you could. That would probably be um, half a centimeter scored to fold it over, but you're not going to see this. Now, there will be a method to my madness, hopefully. Make it easier than when I did mine, my original one. Okay. So that is our sliding mechanism, which will go on the inside, and that is going to be helping to line it up as we slide it through. Okay, so back to our original card. This is the full-size white piece that we had. We're going to put our words on there, and then we're going to try to put everything else on it. So the words I took from the Quite Curvy set, and I'm doing the Wish You, Wishing You the Happiest of Birthdays. Now this is a curvy, curved photopolymer stamp. So if you want it to have its normal shape, just let it sit and loosen up line flat on a non-sticky surface just pop your block on it and it keeps that curved shape now if you want it to adjust it you can on the block you can adjust it and you can even straighten it up or you could give it more curve so if we wanted it to curve a different way we could do that so see how i can curve it that way so as long as you give it a good press to stick on the block, you can curve it however you'd like. So with this one here, kind of roughly suss out where I'm going to put things. So this is going to be my snail hiding, coming out from the top. That's why I've got this big curve over here. So my snail should come out from the top and slide over here. And I might stick my snails onto this that way almost. So that's the mechanism there. And that snail is going to slide out from the top. Like that. You can see him slightly moving there. Or she. There's one pink and one green. Okay, so that's going to slide out. I can see this is not going to be long enough, so I'm going to have to um, adjust the length there. And because of that, we're going to have our curved part coming up here, which means this is where I've got room to um, stamp the words. So that's where I can put my words. So I could leave my words like that, which doesn't curve the way I want, or I could curve it more around that way. Stamp it more towards that direction. Okay. Okay, so I've adjusted the curvature for my words so it looks like it will fit nicely where I want it to go. And maybe adjust the wishing a bit more. Yep, that'll be good. And I'm just going to stamp this in the Memento Black ink. Now, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, when I originally stamped my um, snails, I stamped them in Memento Black ink as well um, because I colored them with the Stampin' Blends. So if you are going to color with Stampin' Blends, you do need to use the Memento Black ink. 
If you're going to color with something else, you don't need to. If you're going to just use pens or um, pencils, you won't need to do that. And so I just give that nice pressure. There we go. That looks lovely. Okay. Set that aside. Okay. Pick that up. Now, that's going to be going there. Now, I've actually adjusted the height because I noticed it was going to be too high, so I cut a bit off um, of the top and the bottom just to make it a bit leaner. And if I adjust this over here, I will have room to pull my tab out the side. So that's where my snail is going to go. My top snail and my bottom snail where is it going there's my bottom snail will be coming out from there okay so just figuring out where things are going to fit this bottom piece here I've got the little hump there because that's where that snail is going to be hiding behind hopefully I got my measurements coming out right. I'm going to hide him there. And then I could do stuff like put um, some mushrooms over the top to cover him up. So for this bottom part, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue this piece onto there. Because I know that's going to go on that section. And when you glue it, Together, start by just gluing the bottom section because you don't really know which um, branches are going to stick over and it doesn't matter that much. You can add a little glue here and there if you find that they're loose. So I'm just gluing those two pieces down together. Give them a bit of a height, height there, slide it up. So I didn't do it straight down to the bottom. I'm giving myself a bit of height because you're not going to see that green. Uh, like that. So that's going to be covering that one up. Now this one I've got the big curve to go here to cover up my top snail. Now because this is straight across, if I put that there, I'm covering up my words birthday and such. So what I'm, I think I will do is I will cut a section of this, the tall section, so I have the tall part just going over where I've got my snail hiding. So I'm going to cut just that section there, right where I have one coming up. I think that looks good and that way I can use the piece in another area so I'll just cut straight through there now if you do it using the dies um, that I originally did because they kind of go at a curve I just flip them over and use the other curve for that side so it's easier to put those two pieces together this one because the way I'm doing it um, it's making it I'm making it more difficult for myself so that section there uh, will go over the top. I'll move this out of the way for now. So I'm just trying to figure out placement of the different sections so I can have my snail moving around. And it looks like it's just a grassy area. So that part is going to cover that up fairly well. There's that section and that section. So I think I will cut just here. Again, because of the grass, I can use it elsewhere. So that's going to be there. I have that bottom section here. And this part. Coming up. So 
this snail will be coming out from behind here. And then I can add some grass layers elsewhere. And that helps to cover up any of those dots. Okay. So he's in the foreground, so I can glue these pieces together to make my background. But I don't want to glue that one on there because he needs to be able to slide through. So we'll put these pieces together. Okay, so I glued the pieces together. Now don't worry about any open spots like that because I've got pieces that will cover that. All right. So once you have your sections glued together, then you need to work out where your mechanism is going to sit and how it's going to work. So it's going to sit basically there. It's going to have room to be able to pull that edge out. That's a section for our top snail and our bottom snail. Now that will sit on the top probably about there. Now because that's sitting over where our mechanism is, we need to slit, make a little slit here so we can slide our snail through there. Now our snail, um, we don't want it to be that noticeable so we don't want it to go beyond this curve here. So that's where you just need to put a little mark where you want it to cut and then you do a little slit there. So put everything dry fit it into place. And see where your mechanism is. It needs to be where that part is coming out at the top. So above the line there. So essentially, where's my ruler? We want it to come through basically, I'd say right around. I'm just going to add a start point and a rough stop point. Okay. Now you might not be able to see my marks very well, but I can see them. And it all depends on how you set your grass up, how much you can get away with and what you can cover up. But we're going to slide, that snail is going to slide up to there. So, and you just need to slice that part. Now you can use your um, cutter, which I will, and make it quick and easy with the trimmer giving us a start and an end point. So if you haven't used our trimmer, it's fabulous. And so the line there, I can see my dots. Put it between the gap here. So I can see I've got my dot, first dot there and my end dot there. And I'm just going to slide this cutter up to where my first dot is, which is roughly about there and slide it to where I think my end dot is. Okay, so that gave me a nice slice through it. Or you could just use, if you have a blade or you could use your snips to do that. And now that will allow this section to go sliding in there. So that section will now to go through the center there. Okay, so now that when it slides, the snail is going to slide through to there. And our top snail is coming up there. Okay, let me just see if that's going to be in the way when I come all the way over here. Now it is coming out from there, but as I said, I've made plenty of mushrooms and other things so I can always put something here to hide that and I can actually so 
slide it a bit further. So that section, I think I will cut it just a bit further. Just snip it a bit further so I can get more length out of that. And that's what the nice thing is with all the extra mushrooms and other accents you can put in there. You can um, hide any little mistakes you got going on. Okay, so. We will stick our mechanism down, I think. It's time for that. So, the best thing to do for this is just glue dots on those four little bits I folded over. I think that will help to um, keep that section sliding better. So just grab a glue dot, stick it on to each of those four sections. Originally I glued the whole bottom part down, but then I had trouble getting it to slide. I think because there wasn't any depth um, between the cardstock and the back of the card. So we'll pop that glue dot on each corner. And right there. Make sure you got it the right way up. And then put it roughly where you want it to be. more and you want to make sure you've got it set in the starting point so this over there and that over there so you know how much you got sticking out the side okay and fold those corners down do that sticking everywhere but except where it should we put a new glue dot for that top side. Oh, glue dot does not want to stick to the cardstock. There we go. with those glue dots holding it in place and then this piece is to hold it so it doesn't wobble like that when you slide it and so that piece I think might be too long for me now I'm just going to trim a little bit off the edge and then just glide that back on That's just going to hold it in place. So a glue dot for there. And I'll just put the glue dot right on. And stick that down to the edge so it's not showing up. And then that should allow us to slide forward. And backward. Okay. So we need to give it some height to make sure that it doesn't get stuck. And to do that, that's where we use our foam adhesive strips. So these are fabulous. Now you got to keep in mind what you're sticking down and where it's going to sit. So this section here is going to sit over there so it's going to be about that high and about this high here so I will do a little pencil mark actually I'm not sure where my pencil got to do a little pen mark so 
don't want it any higher than there. And then on this side, I don't want it any higher than there. And you're not going to see those marks. Pop that out. And so I'm going to put my foam adhesive strip where I'm not going to block my mechanism. So that's why you didn't want your mechanism straight to the edge. But I'm going to put that up and cut it off right where my mark is. So I don't want it to be seen. So strip on that side. And you want a strip down the bottom to hold the whole bottom up. So we're going to do the whole bottom here, the strip. And hold on to that little piece for later. And then we want one section there. Oh, there's a lot of strips in this foam. Um, in the foam adhesive strips, you get quite a lot. So you get like two whole packets. So that's a lot. It lasts a long time. And I always use the edges as well. So um, you get to use all of it. You're not missing out on any. It goes right to the edge, just like our dimensionals. You can use the dimensionals right up to the edges. So put that right up to where I marked it. There we go. So, the top section, now you might be tempted to put some strips there to hold it up, but you gotta keep in mind your snail is gonna be coming this way. So you don't want your snail to um, be shown there. And in fact, now I can stick this snail down and it can't go too far over because I've got my strip. That's the other reason I didn't stick it down any sooner. So I'm just going to put some double-sided tape on that section. And I'm doing it on this little piece as opposed to on the snail itself because I don't want to accidentally get any adhesives in the background. Because if you get anything in the background that will stick then your sliding won't happen correctly. Okay, so that's my section. So as I said, this piece doesn't necessarily have to be as tall as it is. Just give yourself as much room as possible. If it was too tall, I could just snip it off. So now that section there, I'm going to get my snail and stick my snail down onto there. And keeping in mind, I don't want my snail to go over the top of the card. So there's my snail sliding. So you don't want, now I know where my snail goes. I could put some um, foam adhesive right there. And looking at my curve, I've got an idea of where it can go. So that will just give a little extra reinforcement. And it looks like that little piece I had is probably just the right size. So that little piece there. Okay. And I know also this section here, I could put some foam adhesive there to hold that section up as well. So I might put just a couple strips in there. just to give it a bit more support. You don't want it to fall apart on you. So this snail here, I'm going to have him coming out there. And so I just don't want to stick him down. So I might just put something here. Get that off. And then just maybe one more for good measure, just in the center. That's going to give it the height and it will help it to 
go back and forth easily. At least that's the theory. I'm going to take my little snail off there. Okay, so now that I know where all that's going, I can stick the top section down. don't know if you can hear that noise in the background, but my kitten is kind of fun attacking things. He's getting away with it because I'm busy making a video. <laughs> okay, so just the bits off the strips there. And if you want it to like have um, anything stamped there, this would be the time to do it. So I want us to make sure I slide that section in. So I know how far down. And then I just want to make sure I don't, I do it right up to the edge. Hopefully you can see this. I'm not just talking. Nothing. There we go. So right up to the edge. So just to the edge here. And there. Just beware. You don't want anything sticking up higher than the white cardstock because that's the edge of your card. Okay. So now that we have that section there, we can put our snail in place. So we could have a more forward, more backwards. doesn't matter. But we need it to do this first. You need it to put it through the slot first and then stick your snail on okay and see where he sits right now you're not going to see anything there the other thing is that's our little hill he's going to be hiding behind so he's not hiding as far down as i was hoping but that's okay actually i could have him further down now that i think about it i think i will i think i will put him further down So in order to have him further down, I just attach him in a different spot. So looking at my hill, I am going to make it so he hides a bit better. So again, put your um, adhesive on, your double-sided tape on to your slider, not on to the image that you're putting down. And then you can stick your image where you want it to go. So, looking at my hillside, I want my snail to be hiding as best as I can behind my hill. Because I want him to be a complete surprise, just like in my other card. I think he was pretty much a big surprise. So I'm sticking him down there. And then my hill is going to go right there. Just check that he slides again. Yes, he slides. Good. Now he slides all the way over there. And I'm back. So I could have curved this hill a bit more to see more of that snail. But it's how you cut it that makes the difference. Okay, and now I'm going to put him, put this bottom part in place again with the foam adhesive to give it some height. I just want to make sure it goes all the way down the bottom. Sometimes it's easier just to hold things upright so they come together. Same spot. Oh. Always more difficult making things on camera. Okay, there we go. Now, crossing the fingers, it slides. Yay, we got our snails. This looks quite pretty in this lighting. I'm trying a new lighting and Quite bright. So now that looks a bit plain, however, and you can still see those dots there. However, this is the time where you go and decorate. 
Now think about what's going to happen when you decorate. Like if I put that there, when I pull my snail out, you don't really see that snail, do you? So that's probably not a good place to put that. I could pop it behind there or on top or tuck it in there, but I'd cover the words up. Uh, I could have it over there. What happens when I do that? No, that's kind of not. So I think, I think I do want that to be over in the front. Actually, having said that, I've got all these other ones here that I can use to decorate with. So I might use some of these to decorate with. Now, I was also thinking for the tab to pull with, I always like to make something interesting for the pull tab. So I was thinking one of these guys um, for the pole, instead of just saying pole me or something. Um, my original one, I had the little um, presents that you could pull. So um, it goes in there, and so I can figure out which of these guys I might want to put there. So in the meantime, meantime I can tuck some of these in. those guys there. just want something to cover that slit up a bit, make it less noticeable. And as for these slots, I can just pop a few different mushrooms here and there. And so this is the part where you just decorate it however much you want. But the mechanism itself is working. Now, the other thing I did was I stamped words on here because I thought if it's going to pull that out, might as well have something on there. So you need to figure out what's going to pull it out. So if that's going to be the pull, then that way you know how much room you have for words. And the words I used last time was from the handsomely suited. I used the you're the best on my original card. This one I was thinking I'd see if the words happy looks good on you because it says wishing you the happiest of birthdays. So let's see if that stamp will actually fit. And if it does, does look like it will fit. So I'm going to stamp that there. In the black, like everything else. And that just gives an extra little message on your card. So Whatever you choose to put there, just make sure it's um, big enough to fit. And there. Oh, that's lovely. I like that font. First time I've used that. Now you might want to stamp on the inside as well. So I will carry on decorating this and show you the end result. But Basically, at this stage, we can go ahead and tape it down to create our card front. That's why it was all the same size. And stick it down afterwards so in case you have any boo-boos, you can fix it later. When I do my taping, if you've watched any of my other videos, you will have seen that um, I like to do tabs. So when I do the, 
put this out of tape, tear and tape, I make tabs. So I pull it up, a little bit of tab there, another little tab, and final tab. And that way, if you need to pull it off, you're only stuck down in a few points. First of all, make sure you're opening the card the right direction. <laughs> And then because this is going to be the exact size of the card front, try to line up your corners. So line up oh, in one corner. And because I took tape off just that one corner, I can press there. And then I can come down. tabs to get each corner lined up and then you peel the tab away when you're happy. If you're not happy then you can peel it back up and it's not that bad because you've only got a couple parts that it's stuck down. Okay. So that's the front of our card that does pull out. I will stick my little tab on there. I like the yellow one, so I'll just stick that there. So also, because of um, where it's sticking out and how you want it to pull, you can double side them. So you can put one on the front and one on the back. Do I have any matching ones? I don't think I do. Okay, so I will do yellow, a little bit of blue, oh my glue's not behaving, there we go, so I'm going to put glue on the whole thing here, try to put glue on the whole thing, because I'm going to stick the front to the back. And I'm going to turn it over and put somewhat matching one on the other side. So gives you more control over the pull tab as well as it just makes it look better when you have it open. snip off that bit of white. And there with the pull tab, it's like a little cute mushroom. So you pull it there, slide it shut, and then when it's open, that nice little mushroom on the other side. Okay. Now for the inside, I've got the cardstock here. And I had actually stamped my original one, I had stamped that on the inside and glued that down. Okay. So I'm going to finish decorating this and then I will show you the finished card in just a moment. Okay, so there it is, all decorated and done. So um, on this, in this case, I just used the dies from the different mushrooms uh, to decorate it. So here you go, wishing you the happiest of birthdays. And you pull it out to see the snails appear. And it says, happy looks good on you. And so we've got our beautiful little snails hiding. And so I use these mushrooms to hide it a bit more so you don't see the dots that were back there. I used some other grass and that way um, you can hide the different sections of it. So there you go. That's a double slider or twin slider card. And then you could have something that says pole there, but I think that makes sense. And then you open it up and instead of stamping, I just used the one that I'd previously stamped for the inside. So I hope you liked that. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. 
Uh, that was using the snail, um, snail mail, snailed it set. So this is my original one where I fussy cut the designer series paper and um, made the slider. So it's similar. And then that's the one that I just did now using uh, the dies and the stamps to do the snails. And then the inside, that's the same image. This was stamped straight onto the card and colored, and this was stamped and die cut. Uh, this one is using the old olive background, and this is garden green background. So if you like that, um, I hope you subscribe to see more videos in the near future, and please give me your feedback and any comments you have. Again, if you want to purchase any of the products, I will list them below. If you have a demonstrator, please contact them. Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. If you're in New Zealand and don't have a demonstrator, you can always contact me, michellecritchley.stampinup.net. And that was the Snail That uh, Stamps, also using the quite curvy for the words, and the curvy dies, and the snail dies, and the silhouette dies. So um, for the one I did today, I used that die, and the original one I used that die. And that's the friendly silhouette dies. So thanks so much for watching and um, have a good night. Bye-bye.